first, can we just talk about the last 48 hours? Because it's been pretty remarkable, 48 hours for your family. Uh, when you talk to your dad about what happened on Saturday night, that attempted assassination, what has he told you about what those moments were like? Well, this is terrible. I sat there with my you know, two infant children, and I, I watched the whole thing happening. I can obviously recognize the sound of gunshots, and you hear them come across the you know, the TV screens, and it's, it's horrifying, right? He had blood coming out of his ear. He had blood on his face. He was on the ground. You didn't know, if he, you know where else he had possibly been hit. Obviously, it was a huge sign of relief when he got up, when he put his fist in the air and you know, said, fight, fight, fight. And it was an incredibly courageous moment. And, but it's heartbreaking as a son. I mean, first of all, it's heartbreaking for this nation. Our nation should not be in that spot ever, 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 ever. Um, it must have been but, scary, but, though, as a son. It's, it's, it's terrifying. I love the man. Um, he's a remarkable father. He's been a great guy to me. I, I, obviously, you know, there's no one that supported him the way I have. I've stood on the stage every single day for the last, you know, eight, nine years of, of politics in our family. I run our company. Um, he's just a special guy. He's a big part of my life. He's my best friend. And yeah, to, you know, to see him get shot at, it's, it's unthinkable. Did it take you a long time to get in touch with him and to be able to, to actually talk to him? Listen, I know everybody in the ecosystem, as you can probably imagine, so I was in contact with them when they were in the vehicles, but no one quite knew what was happening until they got to the hospital, and finally he was in the hospital, and, you know, I get a call from him, and, um, you know, he cracked a little joke, and I knew, you know, the, the Donald Trump I know, the father I know is, you know, was back, and, you know, it's kind of surprising to have that kind of spirit right after that happened. I mean, his life could have been taken in a heartbeat, it almost was, and, and other people's lives were taken that day, and... Um, it was scary. It was incredibly yeah. scary, but, you know, again, just a remarkable person. Do you think it's sunk in for him that, that he was within an inch of his life? I mean, that's something every president, I think, is worried about. There are threats. You have Secret Service protection. But, but has he grappled with the fact that it was so close? It was less than an inch. Had he, he turned his head like this right before the, you know, the shop broke, had he not turned his head, he'd be dead right now. You know, that's how close this was. I mean, obviously, he had hit his ear. He's, um, Yes, he certainly understands how close it was. And, you know, at the same time, he's not deterred. I remember the first thing he said when I, you know, I spoke to him in the hospital is, nothing changes with the RNC. I'm going to be there tomorrow as I had initially planned. I go, you, you are still in the hospital. You're about to get a CAT scan, and, and you, we're not changing anything. I am going to be in Milwaukee when we said we were going to be in Milwaukee. And well, it's weird to be like, they're singing YMCA right now. It's such a celebratory environment. Yeah. To go from something so sobering to, yeah. to this must be kind of jarring for you. When you look at that, though, and, and just, you know, what happened, your your dad has come out and said he wants to see unity. Yeah. That is what he's seeking for. What is that going to look like in his speech? How different is that? Yeah, this speech is amazing, and it's incredibly positive. And, and you're right, you go from the darkest moment to what I did a couple hours ago when I literally cast the final delegate vote in the state of Florida that made him the... Republican nominee for President of the United States, right? I mean, think about that shift in a 48-hour period of time from almost seeing your father get killed to, you know, casting that vote, you know, and he's going to walk up on that stage in a few days and, and do something great. And it's going to be a positive message. This country has to come together. It's enough of this stuff already. And we need to make America strong. We need to make America safe. We need to make America great. Um, people love the flag. I mean, look at the happiness in this room right now as people dance. You have the cowboy hats. You've got the American flags. I mean, the spirit in this room is incredible, and that shouldn't be demonized. It shouldn't. If you have disagreements on political issues, that's fine, but it should not be demonized. There's yeah. Do you think it's altered what the next four months look like? I, I covered your dad's first campaign. I covered his second campaign. Wh what does it change about, you know, what these next 100 days would have looked like beforehand? Well, I certainly hope it does. You know, politics is an ugly business. I never possibly imagined how ugly it would have been. I think we were all naive. We grew up in a, a big world, right? In real estate, it's a cutthroat business. It's nothing compared to politics. And, um, you know, I, I, think, I think politics needs to be done with a lot more respect um, and a lot more love. And, and um, you know, even when I was down there before, not you, not your network, but, you know, I was attacked by one of the networks, M MSNBC, and I'm sitting there saying it's less than, you know, 48 hours after a guy almost took a bullet in the head and you're already just going crazy on total. You know, we've got to cool it down. We've got to stop. And um, I think you're going to say beautiful speech. You're going to see a motivational speech. And um, I'm proud of the man. He did not need this life. He could be living a billionaire's life in Palm Beach, Florida, and every day he wants to go out and fight for the American people. And it's remarkable. I can tell you if you had a 1,000 peers of his, none of them would do what he did. They wouldn't have that fight. They wouldn't have that energy. They wouldn't want to do it. Um, I love the man to death. He's a remarkable human being, and um, I'm incredibly proud to be his son. Well, and I think everyone can say they're glad that he's safe. Eric Trump, thank you for joining us and talking about that.